Hey, what's up, y'all? Gary with 110 Scale, and today we're here to talk about RC Four Wheel Drive Miller Racing 2.2 Rock Racer. So suspension wise, um, dual rate, springs, plenty of travel, no fluid from the factory, springy bump stops, and four link servo on axle. Overall suspension setup seems pretty good. It uh, handles decently well. It does have some traction roll. The sway bars are functional. Um, you know, get one up, it'll it'll rotate, kind of pull the other one with it, keeping it flat. There's a little bit of interference between the front shock and the sway bar. Nothing major. Um, you know, you could always probably try and move the shock back one if it was bugging you, but I don't think it's going to cause any issues. The suspension still cycles smoothly, so not too big of a deal. One concern I do have, since I, I do want to kind of lengthen the wheelbase a little, is once I do that, this, you only get a few millimeters before that will no longer contact the axle. So I think it's going to need a truss of some sort to accommodate longer wheelbase. But all in all, the suspension setup really isn't, <clears throat> isn't bad with some uh, proper fluid, a little bit of tuning. I'm not sure if they have different uh, spring rates yet. Hopefully they will, or some of the other RC four-wheel drive springs will fit on there. They, they probably will. Um, the dual rate, I've seen, uh, I saw somebody, I don't know if it's a couple or one. They're, they're talking about how, you know, the dual rate's pointless because it doesn't keep the car sprung, but the dual rate doesn't have to keep the car sprung. It, you know, that, that spring is still gonna help with compression uh, on the smaller bumps and, uh, you know, let, let you absorb those smaller bumps without upsetting the chassis, so. Um, you, you could, you know, go stiffer uppers, um, keep it a little bit higher, but truth be told, I, I don't think you want to raise it too much, except it does traction roll a little bit and getting the, uh, actually getting some shock fluid in here right now. You hit a little bump, it's roll, it's going to tip pretty easy. So all in all, pretty happy with the suspension setup. No major complaints, a couple little concerns, but nothing to seriously complain about. All right, so let's talk motor and ESC. 1200 kV, sensorless, brushless, with a Hobbywing ESC. It, it's really not a bad combo. It definitely needs some tuning. First gear, you know, I think you've seen the, G, the speed test in another video, is like nine, 10 miles an hour top speed, which I, I would say is accurate. But the, the plus side to that is you can almost single lug. It, it, it'll crawl really well in first gear. There's almost zero cogging. You can probably find a few spots where, you know, it, you can make it cog, but first gear is plenty slow and plenty smooth uh, to use it as a crawler. Uh, you know, comp crawling, if you need the high resolution and everything, yeah, definitely get something better. Not saying it's a revolver setup, but uh, definitely not bad. Um, problem is in first gear you barely got enough you want to hop your rear end up a lip or something up a ledge that barely has the wheel speed to do it so and second gear you do get more speed but the program in the esc i don't know if it's the startup or what hobby wings terminology is punch or startup setting um if you're rolling back even just a little bit and you punch it in second gear if you're on a hill rolling back a little bit punch it in second gear It'll cog, think about going, and on some inclines, <clears throat> I just, I, I couldn't get it going um, with just punching. It kind of had to roll back down the hill a little and then uh, wait to a flatter spot and then punch it. With some momentum, it always picked up speed, but second gear definitely cogs down low, and I, I think the ESC needs to be tuned with a little more startup power, but that may then impact the slow speed, so uh, I don't know. Um, for a trail rig, with how smooth it can be in first gear and decent wheel speed in second gear, I really don't see a need to like immediately swap the uh, the ESC and motor in it. You know, maybe do a six pole, 1800 kV, something like that. 
but I, I think part of the tuning and everything is to try and extend the life of drive shafts, link ends, gears, all of that stuff. So it, it doesn't have that punch it, spin rocks, kick tail, yeah, make a mess and go. Um, it, it definitely has some uh, some torque control, punch control to you know, extend the, the life of everything in there. But um, definitely fun, definitely fun. The servo. For what it is, again, you know, not not uh, not like a one tenth or a Boco servo, but it, it's been getting the job done. When you're moving, it has no problem moving the tires, uh, letting you turn. When you're at a standstill, you know, it's it, it, it's not the fastest. It can take a bit to get going, but <clears throat> as far as durability goes, it does appear to be pretty tough. It, it's one of the first things that you'll that will meet a rock when you come up to it. You can see there, I've, I've already you know smacked into a, a couple of good things and. Um, there's no excessive play in the servo. It's still turning. So all in all, while slow and not the strongest, the servo seems decently durable. And I'm hoping they put quality servos in because there's a lot of them in here. Uh, the micro servos, I didn't open it up to show you all those, but you, you basically got a servo for all the functions for the diff lock, <clears throat> for the uh, rear wheel drive only option, and then for um, the two speed. So there's at least three micro servos in there and every, you know, every micro servo I've had, if you don't dial those endpoints in perfectly, they, they burn up, they can burn up in relatively short order. So I'm hoping they set the endpoints properly and that those micro servos last a bit because I don't feel like replacing those quite yet. So, but general impressions of the stock electronics, they're not bad. Nothing to write home about, but nothing you need to worry about. You know, I got to swap everything as soon as I get it. So not a bad deal. All right, so let's talk wheels and tires, which are probably the least scale part of the rig. <laughs> You've got Nitto and uh, Method Branding and, you know, uh, Walker Evans style wheels and uh, JD model tires. But with that said, tires aren't aren't horrible. You know, I'd say they're probably about equal to the axial, you know, maybe marginally better in some terrains, but about on par with other RTR tires. They, they got the job done, but they weren't hooking them where I... You know, where, where I expected they wouldn't hook up very good, they didn't. But they did pretty good loose on the rocks. Um, limestone, they really struggled. Uh, other, you know, moderately slick surfaces, they kind of struggled. But um, and what you'd expect from an RTR tire. So the foams are, are definitely a bit on the soft side. You can, you know, that, that's barely any force at all, and that instantly starts rolling over, which contributes to traction rolling and tipping on this one. So. I think some stiffer foams definitely help out in a couple of ways. Some two stages or some of the new, uh, <clears throat> the new two. If somebody's making two two um, printed foams, the TPU foams, um, TPU inserts. Somebody's making those. Those would probably help out a lot. Those things have great, great sidewall, uh, side hilling, and then they usually got a pretty smooth face on them. So you can check out. Uh, I don't know if they make the two twos, but uh, BAMF and Nebula. Both make some good uh, printed inserts that I like. So, so yeah, wheels and tires. I I'll be replacing them sooner than later. Uh, probably my least favorite part about the rig so far. But nothing that's got to be swapped out immediately. Uh, oh, one quibble about the wheels is this. Uh, you know, if you're used to scale hardware, some Vanquish stuff, you know, it's kind of like this. But it, you can't just pop a T-tool on there and pop the wheel off real quick. But it goes with the scale look of it. You know, got to have the hub. So that is one minor gripe, but you got the proper tools, know what you're doing. It's not too big of a pain on the trails. So there you go. Thoughts on wheels and tires. So let's talk about reliability. Kind of the elephant in the room. Everybody pretty much, oh, how reliable is this? You know, when they saw it. So I had this out at Crawlapalooza 2023, um, tried doing U4 with it. Uh, ran a few packs through it in my backyard. Uh, I've got got some acreage in a decent little hill, which uh, show some videos of. And so I put a couple packs. No major abuse, you know. Definitely wasn't taking it easy, but wasn't you know off ten foot cliffs or anything like that. So, and then tried to race it at Crawlapalooza. Made it through three laps in U four, racing with everybody else. Uh, no harder, you know. With the top speed and second gear, you can't really go too fast, anyways. But I broke this link end here. Uh, I did replace it. Uh, with a spare one that I had, not the right size, so axle's at a bit of an angle. But that is technically the only break I had. Um, there's not no, you know, no major excessive play that's showed up in the in the drive line. Um, I'm not seeing any other like stretched link ends yet. 
the trailing arms have been plenty durable. They haven't started um, buckling like the Rift or the Yeti ones. They're, they're a bit shorter. And you know, you've got metal uppers uh, in the rear, metal lowers and uppers in the back. So um, <clears throat> one concern I do have is this guy here, it'll zoom in. I've already smacked this a few times, the diff locker. You can see it's not majorly beat up yet, but the way this is coming up the back, you can see that that's one of the lowest points and that's gonna get beat up. So I am gonna work on a little skid plate for back here, um, try and curve it up right around here just to protect that. The The front won't be too much of an issue because you know, you're not gonna be reversing too much and you can see that you know the front one barely has any nicks on it at all, but the rear one's already taken some abuse. So there, there are a lot of features uh, on the rig. So reliability does have me a little concerned, lots of endpoints. Lots of cables, lots of moving parts, but so far I, I haven't had any screws back out. I know everybody's saying, "Oh, metal to metal with RC World Drive, you have to get, you know go and Loctite it." But we've got some metal to metal on these ones. They haven't backed out metal to metal. You know the pins and uh, set screws and everything for the drive shafts are still in nice and tight. Servos still working. Um, these haven't fallen off. The only thing that did come out, I have it, but it's uh, in, my, in a bag somewhere. This screen did pop off during the U4 race. I was able to get that. So, so really aside from one busted link end and a navigation screen that fell out and one bump stop end, I haven't had any major issues with the rig. So I, I think when you get it, you know, if you're planning on U4 racing with it or, or driving it a little more on the tough side, maybe look into some M4. I'm sure somebody will have some soon. Some M4 threaded uh, links. Maybe, you know, upper end, lower, better, but maybe at least on the lower. And then glue these on. Shoe goo or maybe super glue. Super glue. They're, they're relatively rigid, so CA such super glue might work. But aside from that, reliability hasn't been a huge concern. None of the panels snapped uh, instantly. Some of the stickers they are bubbling a little bit. They're not perfect, but I, I got this one as you know to hopefully use as a U4 rig. So I'm gonna keep fixing it as it breaks. So I, I don't mind some of the uh, some of the little quibbles with you know paint paint color and all that stuff. Uh, but I get it if you know if you're getting it for the scale look of it, which is well, let's just say badass. I mean, it's a killer looking rig. Um, main reason I, I got it, I could see being kind of upset about, you know, some off colors here and there, but, uh, get it in the right lighting. It's hard to tell much of a difference, but in the wrong lighting, you can tell it big time. So I, I can see, I can see that, but, but yeah, overall reliability, first thoughts, not horrible, but I, I could definitely see, I think M4 ends would have been a better choice down there if they are intending it to be used as a, a rock racer, just a better idea. So overall thoughts of the rig. If you're getting it to be a rock bouncer or a U4 racer straight out of the box, it's gonna need a little bit of work. I don't think it's anything that can't be overcome and depending on where uh, where you race and what your, tr your track looks like, it might be a perfect fit. Um, I, I think for the track I race on, it needs a little bit of a stretch wheelbase, a little bit longer, but, uh, and definitely some suspension too, L little stuff to personalize it and you know, make it mine. Um, out of the box as a trail rig, I, I think it's a fantastic option. Uh, first, second gear options are plenty enough for the trails that I've ever been on. You know, I'm sure it's nice to be able to, you know, throw some rooster tails and hit 30 on the trails, but being able to do 15, 16, 17, whatever the top speed is on the trails and still have first gear be slow enough to crawl and smooth enough to crawl with a, you know, sensorless system. Um, as a trail rig, I, I can't see much wrong with it. And as a trail rig, if you're not abusing it and you know racing it, the M3 link end shouldn't be too much of an issue. Stock servo, of course, you'll you know probably want to replace eventually. But you know, like I said, so far it's taken the moderate abuse. So if you're not ramming it up against walls, sending it off cliffs, the stock electronics just might last you for a while. And, and yeah, you're not gonna be wiggling yourself off a cliff or doing you know super fast twitch speed with the servo, but it gets the job done. So theoretically, you could go buy this thing slap a battery in it, take it out on the trail and just have a hell of a time. Um, unlock the diffs if you wanna go, you know, cutting around some corners, have better turning radius and then lock them all up for when you're crawling. So 
I I'm digging the rig. You know, there's going to be some upgrades that need to be done, some tuning, and I'm sure I'll break some more stuff as I go using it for, you know, actually rock racing. But all in all, uh, overly happy with the purchase and really looking forward to see what the aftermarket does, including some stuff I'm cooking up and we'll have out soon and see how reliable it is over the long term.